Hello and welcome to Vivid Many Mods. Today we will once again be visiting the opulent operating room of Grandfather Nurgle as we dive into the creation of a foul blight spawn. The base model for this conversion is the Age of Sigma Lord of Blights, also be using one of the Plague Spitters from the Fetid Blow Drone, as well as a couple of pieces from the Plague Drone Riders. Without further ado, let's get into the carnage. To start with, I prep the Plague Spitter. The Lord of Blights has a flat section on his hand where he would normally be holding a shield, and this is a perfect contact point. But there is nothing on the Plague Spitter which is flat enough to adhere to it, so I use a hobby knife to slice away the barrel, the weapon, to make it as flat as possible. To add a bit of variety to the weapon, I'll use a piece from the Necromunda Goliath Gang as the end of the Plague Spitter, giving it a cool hooked blade and a bit more flair and separating the shape from the original design. Once the glue is drying, I'll move on to the other arm of the model. And as I'm cutting it up, I'll go into the inspiration for this design. A while ago I was playing an online zombie survival game with the usual voice and text chat going on as we try to fend off wave after wave of flesh hungry creatures. Usually the voice chat is filled with people calling up locations need protecting or have fallen, but on this particular night, as the clock was telling me I should have gone to bed a long time ago, a guy started telling us about how this game had elements that were based on a Half-Life 2 beta how there were different enemies in that game that were never implemented in the final version. One of these enemies was a guy with a flamethrower type weapon, but instead of a fuel tank on his back, he had a pipe going from his stomach to the flame weapon. This instantly made me think of Nurgle, how the bloated design of Nurgle demons are nearly always depicted as rotund monsters. But instead of his stomach being the tank filled with noxious gas, I thought if it was filled with toxic bile instead, that would be perfect container for one of their weapons. Roll on the foul blight spawn with his huge tank of plague ooze on his back, and the idea for the mini conversion was born. Okay, back to the conversion. The two back containers for the plague spit rest to go, as they will not be needed in this weapon conversion. Also, they look way too big for this model and keep pulling the weapon off the arm with their weight. With this taken care of, I begin to add some more support for the weapon. In this case, with arms from the Riders of the Plague Drone, the kit that keeps on giving. These arms not only provide more structure to the weapon to hold on to, but also hide some of those ugly flat sections from the main arm. I then glue on the other arm, which will be holding the bell pipe and then move on to the back side section. Another piece from the plague drone the kit that keeps on giving. is this mouthpiece. Even though the model already has a small tail, I want to give it something a bit more grotesque. My mind went to another kit that I'm desperate to get my hands on, the worm spat from Beast Grave. One of these models has a distended <coughs> uh, poop hole is that safe for YouTube? With some gross liquid literally dripping from its butt. Now, I'm no deviant and I ain't going for disgusting with my models. I am, however, going to give him a mouth where his ass should be. So I glue this bad boy to his backside and call it done. For the head, I use a piece from the kit that keeps on and place it high up. I'm going to do a bit of milliput sculpting around his neck later to give him some nice thick fat rolls. I think this head gives him a neat looking ogre look with a small face and large gut. Okay, let's make some goo for the weapon. As you might have seen in my other videos, I usually use UHU glue with some fishing wire to create long thin lines of slime. But I recently watched a video by the miniature hobbyist in which he melts old sprue using flame and then pulls it apart into long thin strands. This is great, as when they cool down, they become as hard as the original plastic. So I got my chunky candle and set about making some strands. It was then, however, that I found a cool way to make them look even more interesting. By pushing the strands back on themselves and pulling them out again, you can make thick clumps of goo. 
Unfortunately, my camera did not want to focus on the spur and instead turned into a moth and became obsessed with the flame of the candle. Anyway, I hope you can make out what I'm trying to show you. If I do it again, I'll make sure to keep the flame well out of sight of my moth cam. Okay, with all my various pieces stretched out, let's have a look and see what we got, and which ones will look best oozing up my plague spitter. You can really see the detail that can be made at using this method. I can only imagine trying to sculpt something like this, with all those tiny nuanced folds. There's also something the UHU glue would have a hard time replicating. I decided to use one of these pieces as a covering for the hole of the Lord of Blight's side, made by cutting off the original arm. For the actual goo itself, I decided on this long, highly detailed piece that will show off this method to its full effect. I snip off the flat part of the sprue and attach it to the nozzle of the weapon. Okay, you might be wondering, where's the main part of this model, the infamous bile pipe leading from its stomach to the weapon? Well, I left it to last, as it was the most difficult part to make. I had to be sure there was nothing else to be glued onto the model. I took a piece of copper wire and began bending to the strand, leading from the stomach up to the hand and then around the back. A nuclear lever is that, maybe drill a hole in the hand to thread it through and then build up on top of it with some green stuff, making it a bit thicker and adding a few gross details. But I am a glutton for punishment and instead decided to make a 3D printed part. I won't bore you with the details of how I made it, I already got a video showing different ways to make 3D models in Blender. I will say, however, that it is a pain to make. I do not suggest doing what I did. Use the cop wires and armament and build on top of the green stuff. Save us up the hassle. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the practical stuff. Miller put sculpt in. I started building up the neck by giving this little guy's scarf, then began adding more fat rolls until the entire neck was covered. I then gave it a few pop marks to fit in with the rest of his bare chest. With the pipe out the printer, I cut off the original hand and lined it up before gluing in place with super glue. Because of the detail in the stomach of this model, the pipe would not sit flush, so I brought in some more milliput and sculpted a putrid infected belly button going around the pipe. I think this really sells the effect of what I was going for, the pipe has plunged deep into the guts of this monster. And with that, the conversion is complete. Let's look at this guy fully painted and go to the turntable. So for the bell pipe I decided to paint it a dark purple to give it a look of intestines being pulled out, along with the sickly green of the entire body to sell the effect this creature is full of noxious plague juice. I hope you all enjoyed the video. The next one will be another big model, and I mean big. One of the largest models ever made, so big that to get a custom base made, which measured 160 by 200 millimeters. So I hope to see you all for that one. Until next time, I'll catch you all soon.